After a while, Devin lets go and they start getting back into the jeep, the bear feeling slightly shaky. Cameron opens up, uh, Cameron opening up just now had been truly harrowing. Devin had known bits and pieces of the coyote's history, but to hear it like that, how he'd overdosed and almost... Dev shudders. He's just glad the coyote is safe with him now and out of that hellhole. He's about to get in on his... He's about to get in on his side of the jeep. Oh, as he's... <laughs> as... <laughs> just, just train wreck. As he's about to get in on his side of the jeep, he stares out towards the town just a mile or so away. While Cameron had told him that he had... Well, well, Cameron had told him that this had made it all... <laughs> <laughs> Great start. All right, no, just uh, my, that's a wrap just, for Keith yeah, Ballard. Just Let's go. Own, just in my own head now about it, just train wrecking and just not <laughs> interpreting correctly where these sentences are going. <laughs> just not doing better. Uh, while Cameron had told him that this had all made him feel better, Devin was feeling more conflicted than ever. Everything that Cameron had just told him practically screamed that this was a bad idea. That this wasn't good for him. Does it matter what he thinks about Cam's hallucinations? That his skimming of abnormal psychology literature about hallucinations led him to believe Cameron wasn't mentally ill? No. How could he take him to Echo after hearing that? How could he drag him into the endless hunt for the truth ever again? Yet, at the same time, Cameron's telling him he wants to do this. Dev looks over so the much I want to say. Yeah, I'm just like immediately, I'm like, no, let's just leave. Just <laughs> no, leave. You just, just you literally home. just made the right, your conscience is telling yeah. you not to do this. And then you're saying, yeah, but my probably mentally ill boyfriend just told me that he wanted to do this. So we'll just take his word for it. This it's thing like, that he no. said was a bad idea and we're thinking is a bad idea and no one's making us do. Like, no, 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 no. Leave. Just go on. This isn't, this, this is not a question that needs to be answered by anybody. <laughs> oh no. Dev looks over the hood at Cameron, tapping his blunt claws against the soft top of the jeep. Hey Cam, what do you say we just keep going north, check out Deseret? You know, see what Boneville might be like, <laughs> see what the Mormons are really like, Th that could be fun. While he says this, there's a crushing feeling in his chest. Dreading that Cameron might say yes, but at the same time, hoping that he will. I mean, with the way things are going, I don't even know if we'll be able to cross state lines in a few weeks. They're starting to shut everything down. But Cameron stares back at him before smirking. Wait, is that a oh, real... No. Was that a... Wait, 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 wait. Was that a reference to the pandemic? Oh. Oh, maybe. It's late 2019, isn't it? And like, I, yeah, it might shut it is. It is shutting things down. We might not be able to cross straight lines soon. I guess this this is now COVID fiction. Hello, <laughs> I was not expecting that. Uh, nope, not even a little bit. <laughs> oh no, this is something you've wanted to do for years. I mean, fuck me for dropping all that on you right before we got there, but. You know, I'm a procrastinator. I don't want you to feel guilty, but just be aware. Why, I oughta. <laughs> and I kind of want to face my fears in a way, you know? I'm ready for this. And before Devin can say anything else, Cameron gets in. Dev looks over at the lake, actually not sure what he's about to do. If he was a good boyfriend, he'd drive away from this place. Cameron would yell, curse, and moan about how it took them ten hours to get there. And Devin would shut him up with one of those sugary abominations from Starbucks. Starbucks would never make up for a ten hour drive for me. <laughs> no, not even <laughs> close. You would have to do so much better. Yeah. And he would never talk about Echo again. He would listen to Cameron and trust him about how it actually felt to see awful stuff. They'd move, get married, 
get a big house, <laughs> and sooner or later, Dev would get his answer, because everyone does Whoa. this at the end. Moving fast there, Big Bear. <laughs> right after that conversation, you're like, we're going to get married and get a house. Losing my entire fucking mind right now. I, I swear <laughs> to fucking God. My... <laughs> So my stupid fucking sketched out visual novel idea has a jo had a joke ending where the three people just take a different turn and decide not to go on the trip after all and they just go off they they literally just continue <laughs> driving through through to Vegas and they end up in a polyamorous relationship and the and the credits just roll <laughs> <laughs> like I swear to god you just fucking get to have this moment <laughs> where you just talk about them just like driving away and not having the story happen. <laughs> and oh, they get man. married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun. I want that visual novel. The visual novel where everyone, the echo cast gets medicated happens. and leaves. <laughs> yeah. Somebody has actually said that in the, I saw in the comments recently. Like, why are all visual, why are all the free visual novels sad all the time? Where's the one where, where where's the, the ones where nothing bad happens? And I'm just taking it back to like, it's like when my stepmother would watch Disney movies. I'm like, why do they always have to fill them with evil? Why does the bad thing have to happen? I'm like, ma'am, that's the premise of, like, storytelling? <laughs> conflict is storytelling, yes. yeah. <laughs> like, some kind of conflict and character growth and, like, arc has to happen. Otherwise, you're, it's a it's a slice of life. I was going to say slice of life drama, but that would imply drama. It's just, like candid camera of people hanging out at the bus stop like like if nothing happens like what do you yeah. what is the story then <laughs> 35 minutes of someone waiting for the bus yeah. and they get a text that says it's late that's I, the whole I, conflict <laughs> like i understand the gut reaction to this thing makes me feel bad why does the bad thing have to happen but that is the entire reason the story exists and why the thing happens on any level <laughs> so yeah, when somebody exactly. just very honestly expresses that that thought without thinking any further about it it's always very amusing to me because i'm like well it what? sort of implies that I'm these like, people see head? you know they like see the the fiction as like an actual other world that is currently happening yeah. so they're like why why do you make the why did the why do the mean artists make the bad things happen to lilo and stitch and it's like yeah, well it's they're the, not th real it's they the only mean argument <laughs> exactly the author's responsible for what's happening <laughs> And why did they do that? I'm going to judge them for what they did. Like, suddenly the <laughs> it's like the reverse of the death of the author. It's like that whole approach to viewing all fiction as like a moral test, but you're te you're judging the author for every bad thing the antagonist does. Yes, <laughs> not, not exactly. Even, not like, even like why, the, that's so mean of them. Yeah, <laughs> it's not even like the idea like oh the protagonist is flawed and you and I'm bad at media literacy, so I'm interpreting everything that they do before their arc as being uh, some stuff you endorse. It's like no, you endorse the villain's actions. <laughs> <laughs> you're in favor of these. <laughs> All stories are about the characters trying to kill their author. That's what death of the author means. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're coming for you. <laughs> it's a, it's a contest, and it, whoever makes it out at the end is the winner. <laughs> this is the ultimate showdown. <laughs> oh no! As they pull out of the parking lot, he thinks he's made his decision. But even as he tells himself he's going to turn left, back up the road they came, he turns right. Because just before he did, he sees a flash of pink in his mind's eye, floating in the middle of a pond, and it's like someone hit him full force in the chest. Before he knows it, Echo's ahead of them. He sees a flash of pink in the middle of the pond, like a body? No, a butthole. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yep, yep, that's what I was going for. Thanks. Uh, hello, difficult to read out. Leave the light on! Oh, there's an alien. There's, oh, it says uh, ACAB. I'm, Open says me ACAB. And it's a hyena. A hyena says Yeah, a I was gonna say, there's a hyena. Yeah, there's a hyena graffiti. Terrifying praying mantis himbo design. Uh, I like that. It's cool, it's cool looking. There is just an alien abduction UFO, which is worrying in this setting. Oh, there's like a raccoon sitting on the, the fire extinguisher. Yeah, and there's a chair with its ass blown out. That, mm, that's by design. <laughs> it's the it's the fucking. Uh, it's the rimming chair. <laughs> it's the casino. It's the casino royale chair. Yep. 
but for gay stuff. Casino Royale wow. Rule 34. It's just like that scene, but for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck the, are we talking about? It doesn't matter. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> so. So this is this is the motel, huh? It's just this is the motel. Fucked at this point. I think I remember yeah. having green doors. I, I love it all being drawn out. I don't know how the ceiling got dented. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Are UFOs real? <laughs> Aliens exist, just like Blink One Eighty Two told us. <laughs> oh man. Well, wait, yeah. I wonder how the I, I wait, wonder how the that, ceiling got dented. Isn't that guy sincerely really into Aliens? Actually. <laughs> yeah, he I is. I, I, I think. think I learned that about him. Besides just the song being called "Aliens Exist." You can see the detail of the door on the left specifically is kicked in. There's like a whole chunk missing where the door handle should be. Yeah. Was that the door? Is that the room that everyone was staying in in Echo? Uh, because didn't the door get kicked in in one of the rooms? We technically don't know. Because we never have but a close up of it. I thought in Leo's route, the door gets kicked in by Brian. Uh, so maybe that's the room. Yeah, Brian definitely breaks into the room in Jenna's route. Jenna's route, that's what it is. So it's maybe that must be scene. that point. Also, I think, we're, is that our first Echo vs. Hyena? Might be. I know that they're yeah. real. It's just a graffiti hyena. Does, does he have a yeah. pier... No, I don't think he has a piercing. It's not a real hyena. No, not a real hyena. It no. doesn't have big old gauges in his ears. No, we solved it. Devin frowns as they pull into the parking lot of the motel, <laughs> staring at the graffiti-covered walls. Are they going to stay in one of these rooms? Is that... Ooh, that's <laughs> fucked. Like, where are they going to sleep? Their van? I bet it has bed bugs. <laughs> the cartoonish caricatures have a way of cheapening this experience. Like, this is only a stupid haunted house attraction. So this is home base, huh? Devin rubs the back of his head feeling self-conscious after taking this place up for so long. Talking this place up for so long. Didn't look this bad in the pictures. People never have respect, respect for stuff like this. I don't think it looks bad. I love street art like this. And it just makes me feel less alone. Like a lot of people have been here and we're just fine. Actually, keep an eye out in case one of them's lurking around. All the graffiti artists I knew were really nice. It's not nice to do it in a place where a bunch of people got killed. Well, I think a lot of people would disapprove of what we're doing, and I know you're nice. Damn, checkmate. So just lighten up a little? Ow, jeez. Cameron walks past the bear, slapping him hard on the ass as he does. Devin raises a brow, not sure what to make of Cameron's high spirits. They just had one of the heaviest conversations of their relationship, and... Well, maybe that is why. If Cameron was feeling more comfortable be being honest and open with Dev, then... That could only be a good thing in the bear's mind. After returning a much harder ass slap that makes Cameron yelp, the bear joins him in exploring the area. Considering that the motel is supposed to be the most haunted building in Echo, Deva thought it would be a good idea to set up the base there. Well, whoever you whoever told you that was wrong. Yeah, whoever told you that it was never been to Echo before. I know of at least one significantly better candidate. <laughs> Jesus. The hotel? The motel? The motel what? was like the safest place for everyone. <laughs> Specifically in room 12, but most of the numbers are missing, and most of the heavy metallic doors are locked. I don't remember if you're ever told what room you're in in Echo. I don't think so. Even though they're all dented from what looks to be the results of literal battering rams. Well, they sure seem to care a lot about boarding the place up. They probably got tired of dumbasses crawling in and getting hurt. Yeah, but luckily, I'm not a dumbass. Hey, what about me? Well, I don't think a music degree will help us in this situation, but you're still pretty smart. 
Oh, shit, that's right. You majored in mechanical engineering, and you work at the most valuable industrial automaton company, or automation company in the country. <laughs> this is not how people talk. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Would you enjoy some exposition, sir? <laughs> Devin's a little taken aback by just how cold Cameron's response is. Well, go on. Your classes in dynamics and calculus-based physics should figure this out for us. Oh, it's because he's mocking him. <laughs> he's yep. saying all this yep. in a voice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Cameron's voice drips with sarcasm, and Dev can only assume he's making fun of the way that Barrett tried to impress him with his coursework during their first dates. But Devin tries to salvage the earlier good-natured mood. Well, I could probably break those boards as long as I move my fist at a high velocity. You see, the amount of kinetic energy... He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Dev's half-hearted tease, teasing trails off. He never much liked the outright disdain his fellow STEM students had for the arts and soft sciences. It's just that it would get Cameron riled up, and that was funny. In college. Now Devin just feels like a dick. Besides, Cameron's ability to understand and play music is basically magic to the bear. Devin's grasp of music is surface level, and he's slightly tone deaf to boot. Cameron wouldn't point this out. He'd just sing along and attempt to harmonize. And while Devin had been offered a six-figure salary career before he gra even graduated, he had watched Cameron's dreams of working in the music industry slowly evaporate over the past three years. Now Cameron's working at a call center he hates. The bear just thought himself to be so smart in college. And yeah, he did all right. But now he's becoming more and more aware of what a dumbass he is when it comes to communicating with actual people with his literal boyfriend. He needs to apologize for this one. The bear clears his throat. Uh, yo, Cam! Dev shuffles up to the coyote, but before he can say anything, Cameron just points at the door. See? Number eight. And the door over there is number three. So, counting in this direction... Cameron's frosty demeanor is completely gone. 10, 11, and room number 12. And wouldn't you know it, it's open. Ah, sweet. Thanks. I went to college. <laughs> that was good dialogue. I, yep. I turned around on this completely. This was good. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> once you realize that the, the really, ex, ex, really, like... <laughs> Overly twice expository. As yeah, twice as elaborate as normal exposition was actually dripping with sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good stuff. I like this. Now, I'll go in first to make sure everything's clear. <laughs> what? I don't know. Squatters? Well, get ready to find a dead squatter, because how the hell would they survive? Actually... You just reminded me there are a couple of creeps that live here. Like, stubborn locals that won't leave. At least, that's what a post said about, from like, two years back. Like a red wolf, and... <laughs> <laughs> what? I... I don't like the sound of that. Are they dangerous? Only if you go after their boyfriend. Uh, from what I gathered, there's <laughs> more of a... They're more of a get-off-my-lawn variety of creeps. Those types can still be dangerous. If no one's been killed by them yet, then I think we're good. But mm. like I said, I'll look out for you. If no one's been killed by them yet, <laughs> we'll be fine, they say, I not knowing that we know exactly how many people <laughs> some of these residents have killed. <laughs> in at least some timelines. I've never been killed before, so how could I be in danger? <laughs> <laughs> The Super Mario Brothers logic. approach to, to sensing danger. <laughs> Dev lets out a mock growl. I'll make them permanent residents of Echo. And by that, I mean dead ones. <laughs> Devin. 
Now Devin can tell that the coyote really is upset. What's wrong, babe? You told me no one lived here. You said that a bunch of times. Cameron. It came up so few times on the forum, and the posts I remember were just really mundane. I honestly just forgot. All right. Devin stares at the coyote, waiting, but he doesn't say anything. Cameron. Is there anything you want to tell me? If there is, I'm still hoping I'm still hoping you'll be open like you said. Ugh, I know. <laughs> hey, it's all good, man. It's not like I'm expecting you to just share everything on your mind now, but I'm here to listen if you want to talk. It's just hard to explain. I guess the fact that there are real people still living here does make it a little scarier. Does it have to do with the dreams you were having? Dev watches Cameron closely, but he does seem genuinely confused himself. Kind of, but they were weird. I don't really think they meant anything. Yeah, I'm just overreacting. I just really don't want to have the deliverance experience on top of the ghosts, you know? I get you. There's nothing wrong about... And there's nothing uh, wrong with being vigilant. My friend from Southland? The one from the town, even more haunted than Echo? What is that? Oh, he dear. says something horrific happens, be happens between a backpacker and an outback redneck every other year or so. Southland is in Australia. Yeah, it must be Australia. And... I think that might, I mean, be, what they, hey, that might be what they call Australia. Because I think every single it, country I, isn't called its name in this setting. Yeah, possibly. I think. Never mind. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lore this, but that's where Kudzu's <laughs> from. So that's all I'm saying. Kudzu was uh, Singaporean Australian. Yeah, I was trying to remember the first at, one. At least his his creator is, I think, or something like that. Because isn't Singaporean like? Isn't that East Asia? Yes. Uh, or Singapore. Yeah, yeah we, you can call it that. <laughs> I heard like weird. I just the first time I ever heard about Singapore was like weird, like, like racist, like strange rumors in like middle school. Like, oh, Singapore! If you spit on the ground, they execute you. <laughs> I don't know. What, it's one of those ones where I'm like, I'm genuinely like, I don't know where the fuck that comes from. Why the fuck? Singapore it's, is known for having very, very harsh punitive laws, especially for foreigners. Oh. But uh, Singapore is a very highly uh, sort of developed uh, country with it's I, I don't know if it, yeah, I guess it is technically a full country, but it's um, it is a Chinese speaking, primarily Chinese and English speaking nation um, that, yeah, is is pretty not. Um, I guess small is the best way to put it, but um, it's like a, it's in in the East Asia, Southeast Asia region. Um, it's like an island nation. I'm just just remembering being so young and easily convinced of things that I would I just someone basically told me that the the death penalty for stepping on the grass Star Trek episode was a real place, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> I don't know if you because you haven't watched Star Trek, right? But the uh, nope, I haven't. There's an episode where everything seems perfect and basically horrifically like gated community white people sort of uh, planet and fucking yeah. Wesley Crusher just starts playing ball with these kids and then the kid and then the uh, the ball uh, like rolls off in the wrong direction and everyone just looks like grave for a moment and Wesley's like oh what's what's wrong I'll just I'll just go get it and he just goes over and gets the ball and then the rest of the episode is him like like potentially being executed for breaking this law for stat for stepping on the grass <laughs> it's like <laughs> one of the most comical premises ever but it's like like terrifying when you're like a five-year-old watching this show and you're like let's put yeah. here even <laughs> i must i don't to, i don't because wesley's the kid of the show so the idea of him having consequences legally is terrifying when you're his that's age. will wheaton right? yes yeah uh, interesting 
but yeah, just to correct myself, Singapore is a small island nation south of Malaysia. So that's where it is. How comforting. While I was sort of joking earlier, if anyone tries anything, I will do what needs be done to stop them. Dev doesn't tell Cameron that in this moment, he does kind of wish he'd gone through with getting a gun for protection. If those men are still around, the bear has no doubt they'll have plenty of guns. Well, let's not think about that because it's not going to happen. Unless they are squatting in that room. Not for long. Oh, great. Just what we needed was horror nightmare music. It's not a good room. <laughs> it's just not a good room. I don't think that was horror. I think that was the door. <laughs> oh, it's it sounded like the opening sting of like a Silent Hill song. <laughs> yeah, this is a nightmare to look at. So they propped up the... So someone was definitely just hanging out in here for a while, and they propped up the mattress just to blot out the sun. At some point. Where was the... Who took the, the like, box spring? <laughs> like there's, oh, yeah, the, good point. The rest of the mechanics of a bed are missing here. <laughs> it's just a mattress. Interesting. I don't think they had... Uh, did they? They didn't have there a were two couch beds in, the room. in the room we had. We had two beds, yeah. Yeah. But I think this is the... I assume this is the same hotel, because I don't figure this place has more than one. No, I think it's the same hotel. The bear's exaggerated bravado becomes genuinely cautious as he opens the door. The room's hotter than it is outside, as if it were magnifying and trapping the heat. Okay, okay, yeah, this is doable. Hey Cam, all clear. Aw, uh, no murderous hillbillies in there? Oh, gross. What were you expecting? We just need to straighten it out a bit. Look, there's even a mattress over there. Wait, we're not going to use it for sleeping or anything, are we? Why do you think I brought sheets? <gasps> oh, I am not sleeping in. Kidding, kidding. I already told you I have a room booked in Peyton. And we better use it, no matter how into this you get. I'm just wondering if they're going to have the, the fucking street get closed off by Dream Logic Street. Yeah. Of course, but we might as well make this place as comfortable as we can anyway. Cameron's quiet, and Dev turns to see him staring at a plethora of rusty nails on the ground around the window and mattress. Your tetanus shop is up, shot is up to date, right? That's a great question. Yeah, great. Just don't puncture yourself or anything. I'll try to clean up those at least. It does look better with sheets. <laughs> it does look better with sheets. The bed and bugs are probably lighting. crawling through everything, though, so... I very much dislike being on the ground floor of a building with an unshielded window to darkness. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like that in the best of times, but now we're in the worst of times, so I'm very <laughs> unpleased with this premise. This, this is where we find out that the game is all about just these two gay guys like doing public works for Echo, like just going in and cleaning up places, and the whole game is just a happy <laughs> jaunt where they like pick up litter and stuff. Just this is just all like power washer simulator, but with furries. <laughs> oh, please. That would just be so th that's exactly what he can't. Cam needs to not do ketamine. He needs to play power wash simulator. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's his stim. <laughs> oh, God, <laughs> that'll get him really chilled out. Cameron watches Dev step step back, brushing his paws against each other loudly. Well, I'd say that's rather cozy, don't you think? I've seen actual homes that look worse, so yeah, I'd say so. Cameron eyes the couch and slowly sits on the edge, not quite trusting it despite the sheet. 
So, what do you know about paranormal investigation? You said you did research? Turns out you just run around with a flashlight, call the ghosts a bitch. <laughs> wow, they watched they watched my let's play of, of yeah. uh, whatever it's called. Phantasms is most phobia. Phantasmagoria. What the fuck is that game called? Yeah. Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia. He's <laughs> he's applied to the Andrew School of Ghost Hunting. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Damn, sorry. Didn't know the reality show ghost hunts were such a sore spot for you. They single-handedly ruin the credibility of actual investigations. Like those YouTubers that got caught faking it. And those YouTubers <laughs> that got caught faking it. And those YouTubers it, that... It reminds me of the, the horrible a haunting show we watched at Las Vegas Furcon, where the people are like... This this doll is definitely haunted. It wants to kill the daughter so that it can replace her and have a mother's love. And then it has like an interview with a guy who's like, yeah, I've never seen a doll that's just looked at me so meanly before in my life. I've seen a lot of <laughs> dolls, but that one really had a ghost in it and it wanted to kill me. And then it will immediately cut to, you know, a dramatization where the voiceover is like, was he right? Did that doll really want to kill him? And then the doll's head turns. It's like, it's like come on. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Fuck. I love Fuck ghost hunting it. shows, but I like hate them. At I, the same time, they're so terrible. I can... I would enjoy talk, hanging out with someone talking shit about a reality show. But I can't... One of the most uncomfortable experiences I've had is watching a reality TV show and just overflowing with comments about how overtly fake it is. And then being surrounded by people who are watching it sincerely and not happy with any comments I make. <laughs> yeah. The like, I don't know if I told did I tell you what the fucking, like, uh, not Storage Wars, the, 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 palm, the Pawn Stars episode that I was forced to watch. By which I mean, no, I, I don't hung think out you with did. my family or whatever. There were. <laughs> The like the C plot of the episode was that some backyard was supposed to have like a cool, incredibly expensive, weird vintage car buried in it, which is like a hilariously contrived scenario that would clearly already be made up for TV. But the yeah. whole time they're digging it up, they're like, "Oh man," because they have to invent the drama. So they're like, "I don't think we're gonna find this car. Like it's just not gonna be here." And they keep finding these parts for like. A motorcycle <laughs> instead. And like, oh, there's somebody else, but this isn't even what we're here for. There's some motorcycle or whatever. I think this whole expedition is doomed. So then they cut to the commercial break after doing like a stinger of like, oh, who's everything's not right with the boys and the stuff. It cuts back from the commercial break. Suddenly, uh, the camera is at a suspiciously different angle and the hole is shallow again. And now they're finding the car parts. So they were finding car parts and motorcycle parts in the same hole the whole time. Put them in two separate piles, filmed at two different <laughs> camera angles. Like, and it was so you have fucking to keep the obvious drama to up. me. It was just so obvious. Like, it didn't work on any yeah. level for me. And but I was the only person that felt that way. So I was the asshole. <laughs> so I just like. Oh my god. So I just, it's just, I can't, I can't, I can't watch reality TV with people that take it sincerely. I can't handle that. It's just it's rough. too. I edit videos. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like, I, like, I, know I know what the timeline looks yeah, like. I know how they're faking these. It's so easy. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, they brought it more attention, right? Anyway, all I really know is what you do. EVP stuff, taking pictures, just sitting around and waiting. Stuff like that. Burning sage. Doing a smudging, whatever that means. Yeah. I think that means burning stage. <laughs> Still don't know what smudging means. Uh, you set up a little laser, and then you, you set up an a expensive Sennheiser microphone, and you just point it at something and just leave it. Set up 75 different tools that can pick up any random thing, and then you have like <laughs> infinite plausible deniability of how you totally didn't fake it. In that haunted doll episode of a haunting that we watched at LVFC, I, the one of the things I remember is they were like, "We we put the doll on a, a dresser and I taunted it with fire, 
And I also had a radio next to it so that if it spoke, we would hear it. And the person like waves a like crappy lighter in like a Bic lighter in front of this Ooh. doll. And then the radio is like, die, burn, burn, I will kill. And the guy's like pogging <laughs> at the screen, like pointing <gasps> at like, whoa, that's the crazy. I've never heard that before. It is. Just, it was. That's what I think of when I think of all these ghost shows is like that yeah. experience. Of it just being so extra and over the top that it ruins all believability. <laughs> I think this doll might be possessed. Buzz, 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 light you for the rescue. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's like, cool. Exactly. All right. Good show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's a start. Actually, I was thinking you deal with most of that stuff. So what I mainly research had to do with these with those who are gifted it's almost physically impossible for the code to use that word to describe people like him oh yeah i wanted to say earlier how happy i was you looked through that forum must be annoying just hearing me go on about it when i don't e when i don't even experience it no you're fine dev actually cameron much preferred to hear it from dev Half the people on the forums were clearly liars with a savior complex. And then the other half were contacting these assholes to help communicate with a dead loved one. Cameron couldn't stomach it and just ended up looking at a blog that seemed a bit more legit. So, what did you find out? The way the bear is lit up now that they're talking about investigating reminds Cameron that he needs to at least try. Well... According to these psychics, it's pretty simple if you have the extra sense. First, approach the location with clear intentions. I'm here to see or hear something from the past. Second, keep an open mind, which is something I promise to do. And finally, if you sense that the presence is hostile, always remember that it can hurt you. In these cases, they might not actually be a person. Uh, I wouldn't worry about demon shit. Even I have a hard time believing in that. Hey, there's something we can agree on. Now, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and assume something terrible happened in this room. Um... Why else look for a specific room, right? I don't want you to tell me what happened, but I also assume this is a bit of a test. See, there was a bobcat that pissed himself under the bed and... <laughs> well, I don't want to call it a test. I'm going to be recording and looking for the thing that happened in this room, too. Just thought you might want to see if you sense anything and compare it with what actually happened. I think that's a good idea. I'm just going to do some light touch sensing. I think they call it. I'm going to see if you can like cold read the room without knowing what actually happened in it. Yeah. So I won't see anything, but just sense what might have happened. But tell me if you feel th if you feel things aren't right, of course. I'll be fine. All right. I'll get started. We won't go super late tonight. Just want to get a feel for things. Sure. I'll uh, get started by opening my mind and making my intentions clear. Okay, babe. I love you. Devin leans in and kisses Cameron on the head. Then Cameron watches as Dev turns off the lantern, plunging them into darkness. Without the worrying aspect, this is actually like a fun idea <laughs> for just a, yeah. an event. Yeah, if not for all of the reasons why this is a terrible idea, it sounds like a great idea. <laughs> well, if you put it like that. 